Mount Warren Heap is one of the many prominent Scoria cones that exist in Victoria. Unlike the others though, this is probably the most famous, along with its sister volcano, Mount Buninyong. It was one of the first really recognisable landmarks to grace and be embedded into the eyes and minds of Europeans, due to the valuable landmark that it served as, which let travellers know they had arrived to the incredibly rich alluvial goldfields of Ballarat, which was rushed in the 1850s by many tens of thousands of people, who came from all over the world to try their luck at Australia's recently discovered diggings. People from North America, to Western, Southern and Eastern Europe, to China and even South America came here in search of fortune. Being the recognisable landmark that it is, Warren Heap was of course cherished by the Aboriginal tribes who thrived in this land for many tens of thousands of years prior to the arrival of Europeans. In this video, we're going to take a look at Mount Warren Heap, from its formation to the large lava flows that it released, to whether or not it could erupt again. And spoiler alert, this area definitely can and most likely will erupt again soon. How soon though is the question, and what would happen when this hypothetical eruption started? I also wanted to clear up some misconceptions about Mount Warren Heap too. Contrary to popular belief, it is not responsible for burying the incredibly gold rich Eureka Deep Lead in Ballarat. This is an old misled belief. I can actually take you right to the tiny, highly eroded stubs of the many volcanoes that did cover this and the many other ancient rivers that once coursed through Ballarat. And I will do this and release it as a video in the very near future. But Mount Warren Heap did bury some gold bearing rivers, just not the ones that many books attribute to it. Some of these deep leads we've found and others we haven't. The major river it buried wasn't really ever properly intercepted, although some attempts and some minor successes were made in the early days, the basalt here is just too fresh and too thick. As a result, the actual deep lead it covered is still down there, somewhere, filled with what would more than likely be many literal tons of water-worn alluvial gold 100 or so metres beneath the basalt. Scoria cones, also known as cinder cones or pyroclastic cones, form after violent eruptions blow lava fragments into the air, where they then quickly cool down, solidify, and fall back down to the ground as pyroclastic fragments. These fragments can range from a few millimetres to metres in size, and sometimes these eruptions blow out massive boulders the size of vans, and in many places around Victoria, you can see evidence of these eruptions and the gigantic basaltic boulders they threw all over the place, sitting piled together in many farm paddocks. When Mount Warren Heap first formed, it began erupting explosively from one central point, exploding forth pyroclastic fragments which would slowly begin to build up the conical shape. Eventually, the flanks grew too high and began to slump in upon itself, forcing a major explosion to occur. The last eruption to occur from this volcano was dated to a million years ago, and we can clearly see that it exploded out here, leaving this U-shape, where there was once a perfect O-shape, just before the climax of the most recent eruption occurred. Before this one though, another big lava flow was released from here, and it flowed south. There are a few parasitic vents around Mount Warren Heap too, but these were largely just small effusive lava flows that appear to have had little to no explosivity related to them. Now, cinder cones only erupt a few times in their life, before the jamming up of the particular area of the fault line that the magma fueling this volcano is using to ascend occurs, causing subsequent eruptions to travel elsewhere and find their own way, so to speak, which basically means finding easier routes to ascend that require very little pressure to break through. That reason is why we have so many of these beautiful conical structures protruding everywhere throughout the middle to western parts of Victoria accompanied by many dozens of shield volcanoes small and large. Mount Warren Heap had a few major flows in its life, so it's changed shape and height a little. At the moment, it sits at a proud elevation of 746 metres, or just under 2500 feet. Because of the rapid cooling that takes place during these explosive eruptions, the basaltic fragments contain many, many vesicles. Vesicles are these pitted structures found in rocks, and this picture will probably be very, very familiar to many Victorians far and wide throughout the state. 
This type of basalt, as you can probably tell, isn't what was quarried to make the many gorgeous bluestone structures that were erected predominantly during the first century of European colonisation here. Bluestone is a type of basalt that contained very little gases in the magmatic makeup, and thus the consistency of the actual rock itself is solid and pretty much uninterrupted. Victoria, unsurprisingly, is the only state that actually quarries basalt, and the reason for that is obvious. We're trying to get to those fucking gold rich rivers one rock at a time. Just kidding, the reason is because our state is saturated with this volcanic rock. We're the third largest volcanic province in the world, and all of this basalt was erupted recently, geologically speaking, with it starting seven or so million years ago in Victoria, and slowly moving south in its dispersal. But it's unsurprising to see these rugged volcanic structures here, because basaltic cinder cones are most associated with intraplate volcanism. And that's exactly what's happening here. With no nearby subduction zones or areas of tectonic rifting, the magmatic source for this isn't exactly clear yet. Thoughts were that this was a hotspot known as the Cosgrove Hotspot, which erupted in Australia within the past 35 million years, beginning in Queensland and slowly moving south to Victoria, beginning here around 7 million years ago. This was the most solid theory we had, until recent scans revealed it to be impossible, because the source of this magma is shallow. A volcanic hotspot has a deep magmatic origin, with the basaltic magma journeying straight from the mantle. But again, I needed to reiterate that this is not the volcano that is responsible for burying the Eureka Deep Lead. The ones that did are not very remarkable at all to look at in present day, due to the high level of erosion that has occurred. In the past few decades, hundreds of trees on Mount Warren Heap have unexpectedly and suddenly died, and we can't figure out why. Which is a little baffling and somewhat scary, but if it's a magmatic origin, I'm sure we're probably not going to know until the magma actually comes out, because let's be honest, no one takes volcanic eruptions seriously in Victoria, and we probably won't until we're forced to. So this is the story of Mount Warren Heap. If this area was to experience another eruption, it probably won't occur on the actual volcanic body itself. It'd most likely be a new location, where a new hill that could be even more spectacular than Mount Warrenheap could be built. Or not, time will tell. Thanks for watching.